Stall. 
His father, Li Wang, had been a scholar and an official, but died young. The widow and orphan were left alone, and Bei, as a lad, won a reputation of filial piety. At this time, the family had sunk deep in poverty, and the son gained his living by the sale of straw sandals and weaving grass mats. The family home was in a village near the district city. Near the house stood a huge mulberry tree, and seen from afar its curved profile resembled the tilt of a wagon. Noting the luxuriance of its foliage, a soothsayer had predicted that one day a man with distinction would come forth from the family. As a child, Yuenda and the other village boys played beneath this tree, and he would climb up into it, saying he was emperor and was mounting his chariot. saw to it that the family did not come to actual want. When Nuento was fifteen, his mother sent him traveling for his education. For a time, he served Zhang Yuan and Lu Zhu as masters, and he became great friends with Kung Sun San. Yuento was twenty-eight when the outbreak of the rebellion called for soldiers. The sight of the notice saddened him, and he sighed as he read it. Suddenly, a rasping Sir, why sigh if you do nothing to help your country? Turning quickly, he saw standing there a man about his own height, with a blood head like a leopard's large eyes, a pointed chin, and a bristling mustache. He spoke in a loud bass voice and looked as irresistible as a runaway horse. At once, Yuenda saw he was no ordinary man and asked who he was. Zhang Fei is my name. I am usually called Yi Tue, replied the stranger. I live near here where I have a farm, and I am a wine seller and a butcher as well. And I like to become acquainted with worthy men. Your size, as you read the notice, drew me toward you. Yuan Te replied, I am of the imperial family, Liu by name, and my distinguishing name is Bei.
next day weapons were mustered, but there were no horses to ride. This was a real grief, but soon they were cheered by the arrival of two horse dealers with a drove of horses. Thus does heaven help us, said Yolanda, and the three brothers went forth to welcome the merchants. They were from Changshan, and went northwards every year to buy horses. They were now on their way back home because of the rising. set before them, and presently Yuenta told them of the plan to strive for tranquility. The two dealers were glad, and at once gave them fifty good steeds, and beside gold and silver, and a thousand cattles of steel fit for the forging of weapons, and beside gold and silver, and a thousand caddies of steel fit for the forging of weapons. After the merchants had taken their leave, armorers were summoned.
sweat. 